Through this club, I remember as a teenager going to Germany and seeing a fully automated robotic milking machine. It had little lasers, it had this big robotic arm, and the suction cups knew just where to go onto the cow. I couldn't believe it. I went home, I begged my father to buy this machine. It didn't happen. Not that Christmas. I remember also visiting tractor assembly factories throughout America. Some of the name brands you might have heard of, John Deere, Caterpillar, New Holland. And, uh, and some of the tractors that I saw at the time were quite innovative. You could actually drive this tractor using only a joystick, like a video game. And it, and it even connected to a fancy new technology called GPS. I couldn't believe it. I went home, asked my dad. I didn't get one that year either. I moved to California, and I watched in amazement uh, for a 30-acre field that was perfectly laser leveled, so precise to a one-degree slope, so when it was irrigated, it, it drained properly. I visited India, and I remember seeing a lentil processing plant with a robotic uh, high-tech camera eye and little air jets that knew just precisely a little puff of air to blow debris and rocks out of the lentils. It was just incredible to see, especially how quickly that machine moved. And then years later, I went to Tanzania, and I saw a small-scale automated flower fortification machine, which I think the FAO might have supported, by the way. Um, th this flower fortification machine improved the nutrition of that baking flour, and at the end of the day, you could just take your smartphone and with a fancy technology at the time called Bluetooth, get all of that day's data uploaded to your phone for record keeping and traceability. All of this is to say that I believe in the future of agricultural innovation around the world and also here in Nepal. We are doing more with less, we are empowering more people to engage in this sector than ever before. We are improving the stewardship of the land and the impacts that we have on our climate. I can't wait to hear the ideas to scale up the digital tools in Nepal today. We are fortunate to live in a world where ICT is growing at unprecedented rates. These tools are paving the way for a new set of innovations aimed at addressing critical development challenges. Entire economies are being re-energized, rethought, based on the strength of market-led growth. And while this might be true in all sectors, I consider agriculture at the forefront. It's a very exciting time for sure. I know that many of you in the room have contributed to this progress and achievement of significant results in the agriculture sector, which was highlighted so nicely by our previous presenter. Uh, we recognize that the partnerships and the collaboration with the government of Nepal, in particular the Ministry of Agriculture, and the private sector is absolutely essential. It is also my desire that you'll find a good partner in USAID. My agency has a robust history working in the agriculture sector in Nepal, and USAID continues to invest in Nepal's food security and integrates many digital tools throughout our Feed the Future programming. These include improving access to financial services, digitizing farm extension services, improving business literacy, creating a digital library 